Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss reports that Sunak is going to move to calm anxieties amongst his MPs as the list of potential candidates to replace him is growing so quickly, there's a danger someone nominates Larry the Cat before the week is out. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So as is common, all the spiciest stories in today's newspapers were being thrown around Twitter last night. The Daily Mail carries a headline that Sunak's allies are raging at Penny Mordaunt because she's doing nothing to scotch the rumours about replacing the Prime Minister. Well, maybe she's raging that Sunak is going to make her seat all but impossible for her to win. The Daily Telegraph's front page carries the headline, Embattled PM urges Tories stick with me. Not a great sign when that's appearing on the front page of a major Tory newspaper. You know, this has come about because lots of names are now being banded about. Penny Mordaunt, Kemi Badnock, even Grant Shapps, who's actually one of Sunak's closest allies, or at least has been, I don't know now. Mind you, a long list of names actually works in Sunak's favour. Replacing the leader for a third time inside a single parliament is fraught with risk. The only way the Tories could even contemplate it is if there were to be a very quick and tidy transition of power. Having lots of names in the hat works against this. So Sunak should actually take it as a silver lining that so many names are now being mentioned. It's a sign that even if his party decides to drop him, they can't decide who to drop him for. You know, in The Times, the front page today says, this is our bounce back year, Sonak tells critics. My immediate reaction to this was to ask, when is it going to begin? I mean, we're nearly a quarter of the way through the year now and the Tories are still digging downwards in the polls. Then I saw journalists noting that this image was doing the rounds on Tory WhatsApp this morning, basically linking Rishi Sunak with Alan Partridge. It's an indication that Tory MPs just aren't taking him seriously anymore. Gallows humour for MPs on the road to oblivion. Of course, there's no bounce back. There hasn't been a hint of even the beginning of a bounce back. Pick any vaguely credible poll and the Tories are in worse shape now than they were a few months ago. And this is after the budget's been announced. Their big pre-election budget did nothing. The large MRP poll which YouGov published early this year had its fieldwork taking place over December and the results were dreadful for the Conservative Party. You think, well, how much worse would the same MRP poll conducted now look? Maybe we need some rich Labour supporters to fund a new poll every couple of months until the election is called. The Daily Express, which can usually be counted on to be loyal to Tory leaders right up until the end, attacks the plots as self-indulgence. But nonetheless, it's another Tory client paper making Sunak's unstable leadership their front page. If you walk past all the newspapers today paying for petrol or whatever, you cannot fail to see that Sunak is in trouble. Kemi Badenoch was sent out today, trying to pretend to be the loyal Tory. She said that only one or two Tory MPs were plotting against Sunak. A bizarre statement, because there are at least four plots that I know about. How can only one or two MPs come up with four separate plots between them? I don't know how many MPs are plotting. It might indeed be a minority amplified by the media. But it is clearly way more than one or two. So in downplaying the scale of the problem, Badnock is actually making it sound really bad. She's basically comical Ali at this point. Nothing to see here. Everything's going swimmingly. Ignore the tanks behind my shoulder. And what about the story that Sunak is going to try and, and calm Tory anxieties this week? Like the fact he's going to have to do something to address the problem also speaks to the fact it's a serious problem. You don't need to do something like this for one or two plotters. There will always be one or two plotters. And what can he do? Tell them he has a plan. His plan's shit. Also, he doesn't have a plan. The point was made this weekend that Tories are not being given any work to do, so there's lots of time for plotting. A government with a plan has lots of legislation going through Parliament. There's literally nothing. The, 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 big, the big news this week is going to be the Rwanda bill coming back to the Commons. Hardly any votes taking place on anything. They're finishing early most days, so of course they then go off to get pissed in the bar and ferment. If Sunak wants to stop this intrigue, give them some work to do, or just call the election and be done with it. Which, despite ruling out May 2nd, may still happen, 
My reading of last week is that Sunak was pushing for the India trade deal. He'd spoken to Modi personally to try and get it over the line. Hasn't worked. I think this is why he wouldn't rule out May 2nd for most of last week. I think if he got the agreement, he would be announcing that May election. But he wants the trade deal and now accepts it can't happen until later in the year at least. India's got its own general election to deal with. So in terms of election timing, I think there are two conflicting thoughts in Sunak's head. The first is getting what he wants for his own profit. The second is being ousted. Now, getting what he wants financially could well take him very long, but he doesn't want to be deposed. So if he feels there's a credible threat to him, he will have to abandon his personal agenda and call the election to scupper that. Indeed, some of his allies are basically making that threat, I see in reports. They're basically saying, look, if you, tr if you move to get rid of him, he'll just call the election right now. That's what they're saying. Uh, Nadine Doris had something to say about that. I'm going to do a separate video on that later. There are probably three videos today. So it could well be the case that when the election is called depends on which happens first. Sunak gets all of his private financial deals done or he thinks he's very close to being deposed. As I've said recently, I'm happy to believe that the Tories are too divided to actually depose him, but I don't know. If Sunak feels the need to make a special effort this week to persuade Tory MPs to back him, it sounds like he isn't confident. You know, if his meeting with backbenchers this week doesn't go well, perhaps we will still get that spring election after all. But I really am at a loss to work out what Sunak can possibly say. It's obvious that whatever plan he has is not working to the benefit of the party or its MPs. Might be working for his bank balance, but not to the party. Will he try spinning the old yarn that, oh, there's no love for Starmer and when push comes to shove, voters will magically change their minds and back the Tories? Will they believe that? Does he tell them he's planning a mini budget in September, which will be much more generous with the tax cuts? They've been hinting at that but that changing the leader will upset the markets or promote second thoughts on investment and then the replacement won't have the fiscal headroom to do it. Would that work? I don't know. But you get the impression that Tory MPs have been getting through the last couple of years based on blind faith and copium, that something will suddenly kick in to change their fortunes. And it's like the failure of the budget to have any impact on the public just woke them up. And let's say Sunak does manage to calm things down, although it sounds to me like this calming down is probably going to be threats. Threats of calling an election immediately if they move against him. Or, you know, but let's say somehow he persuades them that replacing him will only make things worse. There are a lot of prominent Tories, by the way, even on the right of the party who believe that and are publicly saying so. You know, that they don't make things better by changing leader again. But if Sunak somehow calms things down this week, how long until the next scandal? Because there's always going to be another scandal. I mean, this Frank Hester thing hasn't finished because we know about the 10 million. We know they're not handing it back. We know that's a bit of a mess. But we also know there's another 5 million somewhere. We don't know if the Tories have taken receipt of it or not. We won't find out until they publish their accounts because they're not saying. So let's say they have taken receipt of it, which basically if they hadn't, they could just say they hadn't. But let's say they have. And let's say that's revealed when the accounts have to be published in whatever June or whatever it is. Isn't that going to kickstart the whole scandal again? So even existing scandals are going to come back. But there'll be new scandals as well. There's always scandals. And when it happens, and it will happen, Sunak will botch the handling of that as well. I saw a report of an unnamed cabinet minister saying that Sunak had been very badly advised. This is absolutely true. He has been shockingly badly advised. I've said as much myself a long time. But shifting the blame from Sunak to his advisers doesn't solve the problem. It's not like they're changing the advisers for competent ones, is it? Whether the fault is with Sunak or his advisers, although the reality is both, it doesn't change the fact that Sunak will continue to make a dog's dinner of everything. He will continue to give Reform UK more Tory votes. He will continue to make an arse of himself in public. And he will put in precisely zero effort into getting himself match fit for the rigours of a general election campaign with all the public appearances, interviews and TV debates that entails. Mind you, if there is a silver lining to all this political skullduggery, it at least crowds out the actual news. I'm going to be discussing later today how hospitals now appear to be not just collapsing, but collapsing on top of patients and NHS staff. I mean, I suppose stories about leadership challenges are probably less of a problem for the Tories than stories about 
patients on life support having a hospital fall down on top of them, which has happened last week. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.